If you are new to DIY audio, electrical engineering, or you are not subscribed to Electroboom's channel, you probably think that the number found on the spec sheet of the speaker is the actual impedance. No worries, your rookie mistake is forgiven, but know that the nominal impedance, which is the number previously mentioned, is only useful to help you choose a matching amplifier for that speaker. Impedance is actually a graph because the impedance varies with frequency. And this graph gives a lot of information about the speaker, and I'm going to show you what to look for in this graph. If we plot out the nominal impedance, which is 4 ohms in this case, we can see that the majority of the frequencies are around 4 ohms. However, there are also frequencies which are much higher than that. For example, at uh, 50 Hz, the impedance is 10 ohms. First of all, if you see a peak in an impedance chart, that's a resonance. Resonances are usually bad. If we look at this chart, we see a huge peak at around 37 Hz. That's the free air resonance of the speaker. It's naturally occurring and not much you can do about that. Now keep looking at the graph. Seeing any more peaks? No? Let me help you out and zoom in for you. Yes, this blip over here, it's a minor resonance. Let me give you another example. This is an expensive ScanSpeak driver, so don't think it's something found only on cheap speakers. Same resonance in roughly the same spot. This is a resonance induced by the suspension of the speaker. It's not always present, but it's pretty common. Should you worry about it? No, but you should be aware of it. When you decide the crossover, maybe crossover below this frequency. If it's not possible and the speaker exhibits an audible ring at that frequency, maybe include a notch filter in your design. No more peaks in this graph, but what about this rising slope over here? If you don't know much about crossovers, maybe you heard the statement that you should add a capacitor in series with a tweeter to filter the bass. Well, an inductor does the opposite. It filters high frequencies. If you wire an inductor in series with a speaker, it will filter high frequencies and therefore a rising impedance at high frequencies. If you are wondering who wires this inductor in series with the speaker, it's no one. The speaker motor contains a voice coil, which is basically an inductor, and that's why you see this effect as frequency increases. Depending on the inductance of the voice coil, this slope is steeper or shallower. If you look at this graph and the slope is shallow, this means that the inductance is low, therefore low LE, and usually a low LE mid-bass driver is indicative of a good quality speaker. Anyway, let's move on to speaker enclosures. What happens if I place the speaker inside a box? Does this affect the impedance response? Indeed it does. Let's take a look at the speaker inside a bass reflex box. Oh no, there are two peaks now. Is that bad? No, it's absolutely normal. Oh, I get it. It's because the first peak is the speaker resonance and the second peak is the port resonance, right? I'm afraid that is, again, incorrect. Now I'm going to give you a rudimentary explanation that might be a bit too simplified or have some analogies that does not reflect what truly happens. This will offend some professionals in the field, but most of the people appreciate these things because uh, you can easily remember them. I can already see the nerdy disagreements in the comments section. Actually, uh, the two peaks in the impedance response has to do uh, with uh, the analogous electrical circuit of the speaker. And uh, when you place the speaker in the bass reflex box, uh, you actually add a series inductor and capacitors, all in parallel with the uh, speaker circuit, of course. And the inductor is actually the compliance of air inside the box, and the capacitor is the mass of air inside the port. And what is curious about the circuit is when you add it, you can observe a notch forming in the impedance response. And uh, now if we scratch that and hear my explanation, you can see that it's much more bearable. You have the normal impedance chart of the speaker in free air. We are familiar with it. If you place the speaker in a bass reflex box, 
you squish the graph at the resonant frequency of the box. Unavoidably, you create two peaks, and the dip between the two peaks marks the resonant frequency of the port. Easy. In some extreme cases, for example, making the box abnormally large, like 5,000 liters, will make the impedance response not so predictable. But 99% of the times when you make a normal box, you can use this trick to explain the impedance response without knowing electrical engineering and just using the primitive side of your brain. The impedance graph should look the same for a 4 order bandpass box. However, in the case of a 6 order bandpass box, there are two ports tuned to two different resonant frequencies. This means that the normal impedance chart is squished in two places, and therefore we have three peaks in the impedance chart. The two dips mark the resonant frequency of the two chambers of the bandpass box. We covered the base reflex, the fourth order and the sixth order bandpass boxes. If you are curious on how the impedance response of a sealed box looks like, it's just like a speaker in free air, only difference is that the peak shifts to the right. The peak still marks the resonant frequency of the speaker plus box combo. The resonant frequency goes up because now you have to factor in the compliance of air inside the box, which makes the speaker slightly stiffer and therefore increasing the resonant frequency. Now this is all normal stuff, but let me show you some abnormal stuff that might show up in the impedance graph once you place the speaker inside the box. I showed you this case in a previous video. It's a floor standing speaker and the odds are quite good that a standing wave will form inside because the box is tall and leaves adequate room for such waves to develop. A standing wave is an unwanted resonance inside the box. And you guessed it, it appears on the impedance chart. Look at this nasty spike over here. This is not okay and should be dealt with. You can deal with this by making a box a weird shape so you don't have parallel walls where waves can bounce back and forth. But most of the time you will use some dampening material to reduce the effects of the standing wave. If you apply the right amount and the right density, the impedance chart will show that the spike from before is no longer there. We still have this blip over here, which is from the suspension of the speaker, and damping material won't help with that. Impedance charts give a lot of information when building a speaker. Usually a spike means that there is a resonance there. Sometimes they are normal and sometimes it's an issue and needs to be taken care of. Smooth graphs indicate that everything works as intended. Jagged curves means that something is wrong and might need some troubleshooting. Hope this video helped you out uh, in deciphering the impedance chart of a speaker. If you like what I do, make sure to like the video. I don't post very often, so if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace!